Hello and welcome to the Bober Academy Football Podcast. We are excited to bring back our Lineman of the Week series here for the 2022 season, where we're going to be highlighting great offensive line play throughout the Omaha metro area and surrounding areas. We're going to bring um, high school offensive linemen onto the show and their coaches and talk about their season, what they're doing, and everything to do with offensive line play. This podcast is brought to you by the Bober Academy. I started the Bober Academy in 2019 with the mission to train and develop superior linemen to dominate on the gridiron. I'm your host, Chris Bober, eight-year NFL veteran. I've started games in the NFL at every offensive line position, and I love dealing with anything to do with football, especially the offensive line. Now, if you are listening to this podcast we're on, on your podcast app, just be sure to click the subscribe button so make sure that you're getting notified of our weekly shows. We do a lot of different shows out there. Also, if you're watching us on YouTube, click the little button down there to subscribe to our channel and also the notification bell. We, we would love your comments um, and your feedback. And if, if you're seeing this anywhere out there on social media, feel free to like, share, retweet, comment, whatever goes on out there in the social media world. We want to spread the message of great offensive line play. So thank you for joining us. Let's get to the show. All right, so we are back for the 2022 season. I'm so excited to kick this off. Uh, we got a little bit of a bonus this week, right? Uh, due to scheduling within the, the the district or the state, they kind of came up with an odd number. So they decided to add a, a few week zero games. And one of the feature matchups was Creighton Prep versus Bellevue West. And today we're joined by some big dudes from Creighton Prep, man. I got Coach Tim Yonk on here, uh, Sam Sledge, who's their left tackle, Rocco Marcelino, did I say that right? Yes. yes. Awesome. Uh, thank guys. Thanks for coming on with me. Um, the Bulver Academy Football Podcast is all about highlighting great offensive line play, getting to know you guys, getting your face out there. You know, the quarterbacks, running backs, those guys get all kinds of publicity. But you know, we all know that the O line is where the is where the work is done. We're proud of the better looking, better, smarter. You know, maybe not the best smelling, but. Um, this is where um, success happens on the offensive line. So, um, again, thanks for coming out, guys. Um, so, of course, you guys had a, a great game the other night, right? Just a classic football game. Just to kind of recap, um, you know, you guys came out and you just did so many great things. It ended up coming up a little bit short at the end. But it was a, a physical football game. You know, and I'm looking at the stats of this game. Uh, Creighton Prep – rushed for 318 yards. At least that's what the stats I got. So your rushing yards outgained WS total yards, which is a, a testament to that O-line and the commitment to stick with the run. You guys got some great backs, but obviously guys are great up front. Um, you know, ultimately it came down to you guys controlling the line for so much of it, but a few mistakes kind of caught you, right? It was a ground and pound, control the clock, um, control the tempo. The first quarter, you guys dominated. I'd say the second quarter, Bellevue West had some things go their way. Then most of the third and fourth quarter, you guys had a great game. I mean, really, I'm watching that film, and you guys are just taking it to them. A couple things won't go your way, some some unlucky, some self-imposed, and they end up scoring to, to win the game at the end. So, Coach Coach Yonk here. Of course, Coach Yonk is from Skyler, right? He walked on in a blast for the play. Play for the Huskers, play fullback down there. Came out coaching. He was a gross for a long time. Uh, coach and I helped start the junior Cougars by foundation. I worked with you guys a lot down there. It was amazing to get that program going. And then you come out to prep, and you've had some great success, right? Get into the playoffs, some really good teams, good players. Coach, what is your takeaway after this game? I mean, it, it's hard. You're emotion, it's probably emotional after the game, and you want to win. But tell me what what is your message here to you after the game and then after watching the film? Well, we did a lot of really good things in, in the game. I mean, that's uh, there's no doubt about it. Our, our line did play great. Um, we have uh, you know we have a really good group up there. We have five returning starters and uh, our, our the two backups are returners as well. So we have a lot of really good guys here. Um, I was happy with our performance. We had probably if you could reverse a couple of plays, um, you're looking at uh, probably a different, a different outcome. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, there was definitely, there was definitely things, things that happened that could have gone your way. Some unlucky, and like you said, some self-imposed. Um, going into practices, was, what was your message to the guys? Did you did you tell them, hey, we're so close, um, we have to focus on maybe some penalties that didn't go our ways. 
What was your what was overall your message? message? Yeah, I mean, I mean, the things that we, we want to do, I mean, everybody kind of has an idea of who we are. Um, we're not going to change who we are. And so we're going to continue to get better at, at the things that we do very really well. We have to, have to control ourselves a little bit and have some composure in tough situations. And, uh, and, you know, it's, it's tough when you're playing football because it's a very uh, physical game. It's a very emotional game. Sometimes you get caught in a situation where you do something or say something that you kind of regret. And we had a couple of those the other night. Um, I don't think that'll happen, think that'll happen, happen again happen moving again forward. forward. Um, and so we're just going so to continue to do, to do you know, what we do what and, we do and, and uh, try, try to get our trade makers the ball and, and, and utilize the big offensive that, that, that we have. Great. And um, I apologize. We're getting a little bit of an echo here. Um, so we're going to do the best we can here. But let's kind of come over to, to Sam here. Um, Sam, of course, is a legacy, right? He's, he's headed down to Lincoln, um, which has got to feel great to get down there and, you know, really be, have, have, your, have your next year figured out. Um, but, Sam, you, you didn't play a line until just last year, right? You, you're out there catching football, trying to be an athlete. Um, very athletic, obviously. But um, – Tell me about playing the line last year, Victor learning this year, and then kind of how you see this going forward for you. What was your takeaway from this game, and what do you want to get accomplished this year? Uh, yeah, uh, I started a few games uh, sophomore year. I started playing online line, and after I mean after I switched, I mean it was just full go. I feel like I just try to learn and do the best I can and figure figure everything I can do right for my team and. Uh, what I can do right to get in the perfect position for for a block or for for a play, um, and uh, I just feel like uh, this past week uh, I feel like we had a good control over the game as an O line and uh, up front. You know, we didn't. I mean, we made some mistakes, but we didn't like compile them on to each other, and which was really good. And uh, I feel like we just. This week has been a focus of just keep getting better and keep trying to do the things that we can do to uh, help help our team out. Yeah, that's a great answer. Um, how about how about you, Rocco? Yeah, I mean, that's a great. Rocco is a guy who, you know, plays who, both ways, just like Sam. I, I hardly saw you guys come off the field, and you're kind of known as a as a defensive end, but. I saw you play tackle, and you're a great offensive lineman, too. You can go play O-line if you want to. Maybe have to put a few more pounds on. Tell me what it was like out there Friday night and, and your takeaway from the game. Yeah, so Friday night, uh, overall, I thought we played really well. Uh, I feel like we just could have some of the in the game. Uh, yeah, and yeah, yeah. obviously, obviously um, yeah. playing, playing in college, I'd be bringing up to offense, but, but uh, uh, I feel like, like, like the help of the help Coach Sledge, Sledge, Sledge and really good foundation, foundation, good foundation playing offense, offense, and I could I definitely see myself, myself doing myself. that in the future. Yeah, I mean, you could do both. You're obviously headed off to, off to Princeton. Um, which is amazing. You know, you got to be a pretty smart guy. My, I played with um, Jason Gare for four years. He was a quarterback at Princeton, oh. and and he was one of the smartest guys I ever met. So you got to be pretty darn smart to go out there. Congratulations on that. Um, you know, right. Coach, talk to me about, you know, you you got some weapons, right? I mean, I, mean, I think the strength of your line or your, of your team is, is in the trenches, right? You probably agree with that. You got a great group coming back. I've worked with some of these guys, just big, physical, imposing dudes. But you also have, you know, Marty Brown, right? This guy's going to North Dakota State, a physical specimen. Just, I was so impressed with this guy and how much strength he has, but also balance. But now you got two quarterbacks to work with, right? You got Donaldson who comes over from Bellevue West, sat out last year, but then you got Vedral who came over to you and, you kind of have the best of both worlds. So tell me about how you use those guys and 
some of the th- advantages it gives you by having a guy who does one thing, but then another guy who comes in, you know, I feel like teams have to prepare twice as hard because they don't know which quarterback is going to be out there and it could be anything. Yeah, we're going to, you know, we're fortunate. We're going to use, we're going to utilize, you know, all the weapons that we have and whether it's a quarterback or running back or wide receiver or wherever. And we just happen to have a couple guys back there that, that are pretty good at what they do in terms of their skill set. Um, you know, Dean Donaldson's a, a kid that can really spin the ball. And, and as you know, moving forward, I think he's a kid that we're going to, you know, allow and, and, and have him do some more things in terms of throwing the football. And, uh, and so that's, uh, that, that's something that as the season goes on, I mean, he's a, he's a first year starter. And so, um, you know, we didn't want to really overwhelm him too much in terms of, of some things that he had to do, uh, the other night, um, However, the, as we move, you know, through the rest of our season here, we're going to need to throw the football and, and we have the ability to do that. I mean, Dean can really can really do that. You know, on the other hand, you know, Ezra is a kid that can really can really run the option and really has great speed and acceleration, you know. And, and outside of that, I mean, there's a lot of kids that have speed and acceleration that maybe don't run the option very well. Um, he just has the knack of running the option. He's done it for a long time. He's been taught well. Um, he really fits in terms of the things that we want to do in the option game. And so you're right when, you know, from our end, if we're defending somebody like, like that, and we have two different guys that are on offense, that causes you some problems in terms of preparation for sure. And so, you know, that's what we're hoping is that, you know, people are, are maybe struggling a little bit trying to figure out a game plan to try to stop, uh, stop us because we do have a number of weapons and uh, we're going to utilize all those guys, like I said. Yeah, and I, I feel like both of those guys bring unique skill sets um, that are going to be hard to defend, and, and they both probably had a little bit of, of jitters out there, right? I, I know that as they go forward, they're going to be a little more comfortable in the offense, get week one out of the way, and it helps to, to get this week in, and I look for great things from those guys. Um, but, you know, let me ask you this, Sam. You know, as a, as a team captain and a leader, um, you got two quarterbacks coming in. Do you guys like change mindset for each guy? I mean, do you know, like, okay, um, Donald is in, we're going to do this, or Bedwell's in, we're going to focus it on this. How does it work from the O line perspective, having guys with two different skill sets? Uh, I just feel like, I mean, our mindset doesn't really switch. I mean, we are running the ball more, I feel like, with Ezra, and I mean, either handing it off or passing, but we can uh, protect both, both the same way, and uh, you know, both of them are great leaders, and uh, they run the offense in their own own separate ways, and they're both good at what they do. And I feel like it doesn't really change. Whoever's in there, uh, we're just going to try and uh, punish who's ever in front of us. <laughs> yeah, and you guys you guys did that yeah, well. Yeah, you guys did that well. Um, just just uh, it's a great job. You guys, just, I love your offense, job, Coach. Guys. Running counter trap, inside trap, power. You run a duo type play, and then you got the quarterback back there. Who I feel like you just get an extra blocker when the quarterback runs the ball. Um, what about you, Rocco? How do you feel um, with having different quarterbacks in? There? Do they have different personalities when they come in? Is one guy super serious, or is the other guy? Is it different having each guy in the in the court in the huddle? Yeah, I think. I think really positive guys. There's not much difference personality-wise. Um, we know Dean's a little younger, so we have to help him along a little bit. And Ezra's been in the system a little longer, especially with running the option. Um, it doesn't really change up front like, with what we do and our mindset. It's just like, I mean, we're all linemen. We're there to block and whatever the play is. And our assignment, we just go do it. So mentality doesn't really change, you know. <clears throat> nice. Nice. I, I, I really like that you you have a defensive guy who who really embraces playing O-line and you, you do so well at it, man. So so versatile up there. And that, that's such a benefit for um for the team to, you know, be able to use you on both sides. And it's great to hear that that these guys both come in and do so much stuff. And then if if unfortunately one of them gets hurt, you either of them has experience so they can get there and play. Um now we're coming up on a really big week. And when I did, when I used to call football games on TV, every year we did the prep West side game. Um, it's a big deal. I have guys who, who are teammates back at, in the nineties who are talking trash to each other from 
prep. I had guys from generations before that, and they always remember the score of the prep West side game, right? It's a really big deal. Coach, what does West side week mean for you? Is I mean, I know it's another game, but does it ratchet up a little bit when you get to get to play West side? Well, yeah, I mean, it, it does. I mean, anytime you play a rivalry game, I mean, it doesn't matter, you know, if it's high school or college or pro football, I mean, rivalries are supposed to kind of get the, the blood going even a little bit more, um, you know, but, you know, I mean, it, again, I, I want us to approach it like it's another football game. And I think sometimes, especially at the high school level, I think kids get too jazzed up a little bit for maybe mm-hmm. a, a, a rivalry game. And um, they lose focus on what they're supposed to do in terms of their technique and their and their job. And 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 so I, I want our guys to just be able to go out and play the game as hard as they can play, play better than we did the other night. And again, it just happens to be West Side. And I told them that this week in, in our meeting at the beginning of the week, I said, you know, I don't I don't care really who we're playing. It, we just have to continue to, to get better at what we're doing. We can control ourselves. And again, it just happens to be that we're playing West Side this week. So we, we won't have to do anything special to get our guys excited to play. Um, they know that the stakes, they know who they're playing. And so it'll be a it'll be a fun atmosphere again this week, just like it was last week at Burke. Um, and we're going to get a tremendous effort out of our guys. I know that for sure. Nice. Yeah, um, it's a, it's another week that that WRL only counts as one either way. So that's that's a good thing. I I love it because you know you can't really control what they do. You can only control what you do. And yep. you get too worried about your opponent, you you start messing up your own stuff. Um, how about you, Rocco? I mean, you've been there a while, and you got Westside coming this week. What's what's your feeling going into this game? Obviously, it's my senior year, so ending this prep Westside rivalry is probably one of the last times I'll face them. So obviously, I want to go out the win and. We've had a good week of preparation. Um, we feel confident going in this game about our ability. Uh, we just got to limit some of the mistakes that we had last game, and I think playing that first game will have a big advantage for us this week. Nice. Yeah, I, I think so, too. I think that's a big, big thing for you. You got those week one jitters out of the way. And um, How about you, Sam? You're, you're a captain, right? You think that maybe as a captain you have to um, – get guys pointing in the right direction, maybe even tamp them down a little bit to not get too hyped up? Yeah, uh, for sure. Uh, um, you know, uh, the past couple of years, uh, I've been here, this is my uh, fourth year playing them now, and they've they've kind of got our, got our end the uh, past four years. So, I mean, we just have to stay focused. We get so amped up before the game. And once we get out there, I mean, I felt like last year uh, – uh, before the game, we had a little uh, like rain delay or lightning yeah. delay, and we got so amped up, and then we kind of just lost all our energy right before. But I'm not blaming on that at all. But um, you know, this year we just need to focus on ourselves and uh, try and play the best game we can, the smartest game we can, and hopefully that comes away with the win. Nice, nice. I, I remember last year I heard a story that they put you in a locker room and it was like a steam room in there, right? Yeah. Um, hey, okay, coach. Um, we're getting kind of towards the end here because I want you guys to get some food in you, uh, get your homework done and stuff like that. But I got to ask you, what's it like to coach um, this whole line? You got two of your, your studs up here, but I know you got guys in the middle that are doing, that are just playing great football. I watched the film. I, I'd known these guys, followed them. I trained some of them. Um, between your O line and D line, that's the strength of your team. But tell me about what's like to coach specifically Sam and Rocco, but also your other guys up front. Well, I mean, the collective group has been fantastic. I mean, they've really been uh, guys that have, have worked extremely hard, um, you know, getting to where they are in terms of, you know, their physical uh, strength, their, their, their technique. They, they, you know, they, they're guys that really have worked hard to, you know, hone their craft a little bit. And, and that's awesome because they're, they're really a veteran group that we can really lean on. Um, they're, they're like coaches on the field in a lot of ways because they make uh, a lot of calls and they make a lot of decisions up there. And, and so, you know, those guys are, are guys that we're going to lean on heavily. Our defensive line are guys that are, are, uh, are awesome and have, have, uh, playing at a high level as well. And, uh, you know, and these two guys specifically, I mean, uh, you know, Sam, I've known for a very long time. He was our ball boy at gross when I was there and, 
and uh, you know, to, to see where he's at and to, to see him, you know, you know, with such a bright future and uh, ahead of him at the, you know, here at, at prep in his senior year. And then down at the university of Nebraska, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm really proud of him and, and the way and that he has really kind of uh, developed into a, a great player and, and a fine young man. You know, Rocco's a guy that has tremendous ability as well. He's long, uh, can really run. He's athletic as heck. Um, and, and again, he does a tremendous job on, uh, on the offensive line uh, for us. Uh, he's a guy that we had to maybe sell a little bit in terms of playing the offensive line uh, a couple <laughs> years ago. Um, but I think he's really happy about that. I think it's helped him as a football player. Um, and it's given him an opportunity to, to now, you know, he's committed to go to Princeton to, to play football and, and to play defensive end at Princeton. And so um, I, I think helping him, uh, you know, playing the offensive line has helped him develop into a really good football player and defensive player. And uh, again, I can't be more proud of these two guys because they're tremendous leaders they are fine young men and uh, really, really proud of them. And I want to, I want to see them have a great deal of success this year. Yeah. They, they've started off really, really well. You know, of course he didn't get the W, but if you watch that game and just looked at the, the trenches, you guys really had a great game. I thought, I thought you guys did. And the thing about these two guys that stood out to me is how athletic they are. Right. You mm -hmm. get some guys that are just kind of like, good old Lima, but these guys are athletes, man. Yeah. They can run, they're long. It's just amazing what kind of athletic ability they have. And I can't and that's a tribute to, to them. I mean, they're, they're, they're obviously, they've, you know, God's, you know, gifted them with some, some natural ability. Um, but they've worked very hard at, at getting better. You know, I mean, they've worked hard in the weight room and they've worked hard at running and they've worked hard at their, at, at, at technique. Mm -hmm. And uh, you give them a lot of credit for that because they've really, uh, they've really, taking their, their position and, and playing the O-line very seriously. And, uh, you know, they're, they're playing at a, an extremely high level. Yeah, definitely masters of the craft. And they're also coached by one of the better O-line coaches around too. You're There's no question. you got to give a shout out to Coach Sledge because he does, does a tremendous job with all of our guys throughout the, the course of our program. I mean, our younger guys are getting, continuing to get better because of his, his tutelage and, and, the develop, overall development um, is something that we really pride ourselves on, and he is one of the best around, no question. I love talking shop with Bob, and every time I get out there, I get to talk to him. All right. Um, all right. Sam, Sam and Rocco. And Rocco. Let's, Let's finish this up because I want to hear about your old line, like, and not just the stuff I see on the O linemen, linemen, we're pretty, we're tight, pretty tight, right? right? We go eat we together, together, we hang out together. together. Tell me about some of your boys, man. Who's like the funny one? Who's serious? Who thinks they're the ladies' man? I mean, give us some dirt. We're going to put this out there on Twitter or YouTube. Who can you embarrass, man? That's what I'm going to do to each other. Tell me about some of your guys. Christian Lewis is definitely the funny one. Yeah, I love hanging out with Christian. I mean, I know how to do it. summer, we hang out together and go to – Go to Cole Jarrett's pool and do different things together. So, yeah, I just love hanging out with them, and we're really close, and I, I love it. How about you, How about Sam? You I've been in Jarrett's pool, too. His, his dad was my roommate in college, so I've been at that pool, too. Yeah, uh, I would say uh, Brandel's probably the serious one, our center, and uh, he's uh, – I mean, he works hard, but he's definitely the serious one. And uh, Cole Jarrett, I mean – I feel like everyone likes him. Everyone enjoys him. Uh, he's just always has a either a smart joke or a mm. uh, you know kind of just gets he can get under your skin uh, <laughs> on the football field and uh, yeah. yeah. He's just like his dad. His dad is exactly the same way. He's been one of my best friends. He's my friend's godfather. He's exactly <laughs> talking all the time. <laughs> Well, that's, that's, that's awesome, awesome, man. That's awesome. It sounds like you guys, I mean, you guys have a great group up there. And, you know, after watching this game, I, I truly believe that you're going to get more out of this, even with the loss by going through what you went through. Right. I saw there's a few mis like maybe self-imposed mistakes that happened out there that I'm sure you can get cleaned up coach. Um, you're headed as you go through the season, you come out, you took one, right away but what what going forward what's your message to these guys is it just day by day or do you have like a certain expectation what to finish us off tell us how you see this going forward 
Well, we expect to, expect to win a lot of football games. I mean, we're focusing on, you know, obviously West Side this week, and and then we'll turn our attention to Millard North, and then we'll turn our attention to Gretna. I mean, the, the state didn't do any favors for us in terms of our schedule. Our first our first five games are as good as, as they are in terms of uh, just our quality of opponents. And so um, we can't look ahead of, to anyone. I mean, all we can do is really focus on our own own stuff and, and really continue to get ourselves better. And, uh, you know, and, you know, we talk about playing playing a very physical style of, game, of, of a football game and, and doing our job. I mean, that's really as simple as we make it. And I put that at the bottom of every practice plan, play physical and do do your job. And if and if we all do that and we do it at a high level, I mean, this team has got the sky's the limit for this football team. Um, and we're going to win a lot of football games and we're going to we're going to have a shot in in uh it, in the playoffs when at the end of the day we're going to be one of the teams left standing um and uh and so but we're gonna we're gonna have to lean on those big boys up front for sure yeah the, you guys got a, a i guess i'm so impressed i think I, um iron sharper is iron right that fire is gonna, gonna make you guys better and you just gotta get to the playoffs playing your best football and give yourself the best shot um Guys, um, I really appreciate guys, you coming really on. You Sam coming and Rocco, I'll just Sam give you Rocco, this. Give Your high school year of football yes. is one of the best seasons you'll ever have. You guys are both going to go play football somewhere else. else. But you'll yeah. always remember your high school year of football. And isn't the wins, isn't the, isn't the losses, it's just how much you gave and what you accomplished with your boys. So go out there, man. Have fun. Have fun with it. You have no worries. And just get after it because I see you guys being very physical here at sports all the way through November. So, Coach, Sam, Rocco, thanks for coming along with me. I really appreciate it. I'm going to get you guys some shirts, some Boulder Academy shirts. I got mine out here. You guys can rep that right there. I may even throw a hat in there too. I got my hat out there. But um, if you guys need anything from me, you guys know where to reach me. Um, I love helping out online, and I love what you guys are doing. So, thanks for coming on our podcast. And – Podcast. I'll put this out there for you guys all to watch, and I'm going to be watching you guys all year on, okay? So get some rest, do your homework, have a great night, okay? All right. Thanks. Thanks. The Bober Academy Football Podcast is available on all pla podcast platforms. So wherever you listen to your podcast, we're going to be on there. Be sure to subscribe to our channel. That way you get notified of new episodes. Um, also, we are on YouTube. Um, if you want to find us on YouTube, just uh, search for the Chris Bober Lyman Academy. And be sure to subscribe to our page. Um, click the notification bell and feel free to comment, share everything that goes on there. Um, we're on social media as well. You know, follow us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. We even have a page on TikTok. So the more you can follow us out there, the more we can spread the message of great offensive line play out there. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback, be sure to reach out to us through any of those social media channels and spread the word. We want to get offensive line play great here and everywhere across the area.